Let's start by going over a simple yet extremely important thing to do in every match. Formulate a strategy based on the heroes in play. Going forward, I'm going to focus primarily on analyzing specific moments in matches, but if I spend time going over team comps for every single match, that's really going to bog things down. So just for this first video, I'm going to focus just on team comps. The first thing I do during the setup phase is check which heroes the rest of my team are picking. Lineups usually change mid-round, but you can build a solid foundation for a strategy based on the starting lineup. You can get a general idea for your preferred healing targets based on DPS and tanks they pick, as well as how to use your ult based on which other support hero your team will have. In this case, we've got McCree and Hanzo on DPS, Reinhardt and Roadhog on tank, and Ana as the other support. When playing alongside an Ana, mentally my job feels a lot easier because my ult is the only one between the two of us that can be used defensively to prevent a team wipe, so I don't really need to coordinate ult timing with her. Plus, the Ana is going to focus primarily on keeping our tanks alive since they're easier targets for her to hit, making it easier for her to build her own ult quickly. So for the most part, I'm going to try to keep my Orb of Harmony on the McCree. He has squishy health, he has no means of restoring his own health, and the Hanzo can climb to places that I wouldn't be able to reach, so keeping line of sight with him would be more problematic. Ana herself will also need some attention since she can only heal herself for 100 HP every 8 seconds with the Biotic Grenade. About 10 or 15 seconds after the round starts, the enemy's team's heroes are revealed, so I start to check those pretty frequently. In this case, we're dealing with McCree and Mei on DPS, Reinhardt and Roadhog on tanks, and Mercy and Ana on support. When I'm looking at the enemy heroes, I've always got counter ult on the brain. If you want Transcendence to actually make a difference in a match, you should always try to keep it stocked as a response to the enemy team's ults. Winning the ult economy war is so much more important than popping Transcendence as soon as you see a critical health bar. So against this team, my main concern is the Reinhardt Ana ult combo, and staying out of Reinhardt's line of sight if I feel an Earth Shatter is coming soon. Mei is the only other hero on their team whose ult has team wipe potential. But the inconsistent nature of her ult means you should make judgment calls on using your own ult in response. Her ult has a lot of startup time, which gives you plenty of time to assess the situation and decide whether or not popping transcendence is worthwhile. Once the round is over and we flip sides, I need to reassess everything. Now my team's lineup is Soldier76 and Junkrat on DPS, Reinhardt and Zarya on tanks, and Mercy as the other support. I want to talk about Mercy here specifically, because she's one of the supports you should strategize your ult usage around. Picture this scenario. A push is going poorly for you because your team is just plain getting outplayed. The enemy isn't burning any ults to secure their kills, they're just taking advantage of stronger positioning. But your Mercy was hiding with an ult on deck, and she swoops in with a 4 player res. Great, right? The problem here is the enemy team didn't burn any ults, so the likelihood of something like an Earth Shatter, a Graviton, a Dead Eye, a Death Blossom, or something else capable of quickly wiping you all out as soon as you revived is very high, and that would make the res a waste. But you can't really expect a Mercy to just hold onto her res when she sees four dead teammates, so what could have been done? That's where Transcendence comes in. Transcendence will give your team a fighting chance in the post-res situation. Be on the lookout for any of those team wipe ults, then pop yours. The ult economy will even out, and most of your team's health should be topped off, so you should be in a good position to win the fight. Obviously there are some exceptions to team wipe ults that Zen can't save anyone from, namely Deadeye, Riptire, Self Destruct, and in some cases Rocket Barrage. You can save yourself, sure, but Zen alone generally can't win any encounter other than a one on one, so that still counts as a wasted attempt at a counter ult. So that's the basic idea of playing alongside a Mercy. It's all about getting the most value out of both of your ults. Moving on to the next game, on my team the tank and support situation is exactly the same as the last game, but this time on DPS we've got Junkrat and Reaper. Junkrat is probably the most fragile character in the game next to Zen himself. No health restoration, no armor or shields, and no mobility outside of the landmine, so he's going to need an Orb of Harmony pretty often. Reaper is a tricky hero to keep topped off, mainly because Reaper players tend to go off on their own to try to disrupt the enemy's backlines. You pretty much have to bank on the Reaper player being smart enough to head back to his allies for heals right after he uses Wraith form to get out of danger. Our Ana will typically be too preoccupied with keeping the tanks alive and charging her own ult to worry about healing the DPS. Try to make her job easier by taking on that responsibility. The enemy is running, Hanzo and Mei on DPS, Zarya and Roadhog on tanks, and Lucio and Symmetra on support. An enemy Zarya is always a sign for me to save my ult for Gravitons exclusively. You can't ask for a better situation. You and your teammates will get grouped together nice and neatly for constant heals. 
And Graviton is one of the most valuable ults in the game, so burning Transcendence is almost always worth the cost. But you have to think about Graviton being comboed with another ult, not just Graviton by itself. In this case, they only have one viable combo, Hanzo's Dragon Strike. When I see this, I actually feel relieved, because Dragon Strike puts out 200 DPS while Transcendence heals for 300 per second. So if that combo ever comes into play, I get to kill two birds with one stone. In the next round, our team comp is exactly the same as on attack, but now the enemy team has McCree and Farah on DPS, Reinhardt and Winston on the tanks, and Ana and Zen on support. In terms of counter ulting, once again the Reinhardt Ana combo is my main concern. Possibly also a Winston Ana if the Tesla cannon alone is really going to tear the team apart. Transcendence can save lives from a Farah's rocket barrage, but that ult actually has so much sustained damage that it can outrace Zen's healing if the fire is directly concentrated. Typically though, that only happens when comboed with a Zarya Graviton, and this team isn't running a Zarya at all, so I'm keeping it in the back of my head as something potentially worth burning my ult for if the situation calls. Next game, we finally got a Lucio as our second support. Definitely need to talk about this. I feel pretty strongly that if you're playing with a Lucio, you have to communicate and coordinate your ults. If you don't, you're almost certainly going to react to the same enemy ults by pushing Q at the same time, and that is horribly inefficient. If the enemy team has a lot of ults stockpiled for the next push, and both you and the Lucio blow your defensive ults at the same time, you can pretty much kiss your asses goodbye as soon as those wear off. Keep track of each other's ult statuses as much as possible and remind each other whose responsibility it is to respond to which enemy ults. If the enemy team has a Tracer or Junkrat, you as the Zen should understand that your ult won't save anybody from a Pulse Bomb or Rip Tire except yourself, so make sure the Lucio knows that his ult can actually do something about those. On the enemy team, the only hero we haven't covered counter ulting with yet is Genji. Transcendence is an excellent way to cockblock Genji's ult, and you probably already knew that, but I just wanted to bring up something that most other Zen players seem to forget in the moments of panic. It can be tempting to pop your ult as soon as you hear Dragon Blade activate, but remember, you can have both your Orb of Harmony and Orb of Discord applied to players while you're doing Transcendence. There's no cost for throwing out the orbs, so why not, right? If you can help it, try not to activate your ult until you confirm where the Genji is. You might not actually be in a position to save whoever Genji is targeting. Once you see him, throw a Discord on him before you pop Transcendence, and that'll give everyone a better chance of taking him down while your hands are tied. This only takes a fraction of a second worth of extra time to set up. Plus, one swing of Dragon Blade only does 120 damage, so unless he's attacking someone already below full health, they're going to survive that first swing. Basically, if you get too eager with using your ult to nullify a Dragon Blade, you can miss out on doing a couple simple little things that makes everyone's lives easier. Last thing, just wanted to touch on who some of your prime candidates for Orb of Harmony are, namely Genji, Farah, D.Va, and Winston. These are all highly mobile heroes that will typically stray away from the main group, but they can't restore their own health, so Orb of Harmony is perfect for keeping them alive while keeping your own position safe. Winston players in particular are going to love you if you focus on making his job easier. Not only will giving him a Harmony Orb encourage him to engage the enemy, but if you can also mark a squishy target with Discord, the Winston will zone in and focus him down very quickly. It's a win-win situation. Alright, that's it for now. Next time I'll actually get into analyzing key moments in the matches themselves so I can figure out where I'm making bad calls and iron those out of my game plan.